Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Building Business Back Program's next workshop on hiring in a pandemic. Uh, so the Building Business Back Program is a partnership with the County of Monterey, federally funded by the ARPA program, the American Recovery Plan Act. Our purpose is to help businesses throughout Monterey County to recover from the pandemic. And as part of that, uh, we are doing a series of workshops, including uh, the workshop that we're doing today. So I, again, I want to thank you all for coming. We are here with Julia Cervantes. She is a senior recruiter, recruiter at Spherion Staffing and Recruiting, which is a local staffing company. And Julia is here today to share with us uh, about how to hire in a pandemic, what, what has changed, and uh, what can employers look forward to when, when we're trying to hire people within this environment. So with that introduction, I'll pass things over to Julia. Uh, welcome, Julia. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Julia. I'm a senior recruiter here for Spirion Staffing. Have been part of this company for now five years, going on to six. So I'm very excited to talk the topic today of hiring during the pandemic. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Topic of today, hiring in a pandemic with new strategies to help you find and retain employees. So a little background about Spherion. We've been in business for 76 years. We have 79 franchises and 39 states with a total of 210 locations. Our local rating currently here in the Salinas County area is a 4.9. Workforce competition is fierce in Monterey. As y'all know, we have really strong competitors as in Taylor Farms, Mans Packing, Hartnell College, Macy's, and et cetera. The competition's grass may appear greener by competitive wages, anytime instant cash out after shifts, climate control, sign on bonus, but the grass may not be that greener. With local, with limited local HR support, strict attendance policies, and must be able to read and speak English. As you all know, we live in a community where sometimes English isn't the first language. The only place success comes before work is in the dictionary by the great Vince Lombardi. You have to commit to and invest in becoming the employer of choice. With that being said, it's time to play some offense. Reaccess your hiring process, relax or eliminate specific hiring requirements, such as years of experience, degrees, certifications, and screenings. Eliminate or reduce the number of pre-start checks. Ensure your pay is competitive. Do your, do your research. High pay is still number one. Review how easy it is for your employees to get paid timely and accurately. Consider advanced pay options for hours worked or for employees that have emergency needs. Up your incentive game. Competitive pay is expected, but what else can you do? Offer retention bonuses to offset other sign-on bonuses. Provide incentives based on individual and or team performance. Socialize your safety and efforts and record. And if you have gaps in safety, get on it. Promote your safety record. Highlight temperature checks, social distancing, and other safety measures. Or maybe an option is offer remote work options, provide needed technology, reimbursement for cost of personal internet or phone services. Sell your brand strengths. Request Google ratings and add meaning to your work. Request Google ratings from your employees. Encourage your workforce to have honest and honest reviews. Also promote your employer brand. Connect the work your employees do to a great purpose. Fix what's broken. Defense is your best offense. Examine your engagement and retention efforts. Do your employees really like coming to work every day? Show employees how their work contributes to overall company performance. Ensure your employees feel valued by managers and your company. Build an atmosphere based on respect, trust, and transparency. Appreciate, recognize, and reward them with members for their work. Celebrate wins or team accomplishments. Focus on upskilling. It's a win-win for you and your employees. Proactively map existing roles to future roles and begin training now. Actively reward participation. 
let people know about it. Make work slash life balance a reality. Your employees shouldn't have to fight for this. Reduce burnout, mental and physical fatigue. Encourage breaks, getting away from work areas for lunch, maybe even offer holiday and vacation benefits for hourly and part-timers. Be flexible with shifts and schedules. Explore scheduling flexibility, flexible hours and days. Consider part-time weekends and flexible starts and stop times. Allow employees to work remotely when possible. Adopt a productive anywhere model of hybrid model. Revisit your PTO policy. Make sure taking time off is encouraged. Add floating holidays are meaningful to your employees. Provide paid time off for community give back or slash volunteer activities. Become an employer of your choice. The 10 strategies to follow. Reacts as your hiring process, ensure your pay is competitive, up your incentive game, sell to your brand strengths, socialize your safety record, examine your retention efforts, focus and upskilling, be flexible with schedules and shifts, make work-life balance a reality, revisit your PTO policy. Overall takeaway, you must be able to recite what's different about your company compared to your employment competitors, prove it and socialize it. Promote the change. Once you've taken some strong steps towards becoming the employer of choice, you have to let the world know. Post on social media, internal posters, communicating updates, HR team work sessions, they will be your frontline advocates. Sell the sizzle through your leaders. Let's get to work. Thank you all for your time. I appreciate the opportunity on today's chat. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I can't hear you. I, I can't hear you. I'm on mute. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was typing. So thank you, Julia. I wanted to say, uh, I'll repeat this, um, that thank you to Julia for stepping in at the last moment because it was actually her boss was supposed to do the presentation Correct. and had an emergency and said, Julia, I need you to cover this. So I know that you weren't, uh, you know, didn't have the normal preparation time to go through everything. So I thank you for that. Um, what I'd like to do is spend uh, some time, since that was really fast, uh, let's spend a little bit of time just talking, you and me, about what, and, and if any of the people watching have any questions, you can type those into the Q&A. But what I'd like to do is just have an informal conversation with you as a uh, senior staffing professional about what has changed because of the pandemic and maybe some tips that might help it, some other tips that might help employers. So um, one question is, what, what employment areas that you've seen have grown because of the pandemic and what employment areas um, have, have diminished or there are fewer jobs available because of the pandemic. Can you talk about that for a moment? Yes, definitely. So I've definitely seen the growth in our uh, industry, our warehouse industry. Definitely have seen that growth. Um, you know, less people working, it has uh, impacted humendously. Um, you know, we need more jobs. We need, it's just to the point where the warehouse has expanded so much. We have employees who are not, um, you know, they, they want to work. They don't want to be at home. They want to get encouraged on to going to home. I can't repeat that question. I'm sorry. I'm like, yeah, the question is just like uh, certain jobs and certain businesses have done well during the pandemic. Others have suffered. And when we look at from an employment standpoint, what types of job areas have grown because because of the pandemic and which one which ones have diminished maybe there are fewer jobs available than there were before the pandemic so it's kind of the question is how has the pandemic overall affected oh, okay. uh, different employment areas okay so okay so with that being said it would be the agriculture with the warehouse as you know it's a little bit scary going back to work in an environment where you're unfortunately not six feet away from somebody 
right? So it makes it scary. Not, be, not being able to do remote working. You obviously can't do that when you're working in a warehouse environment. You're, you know, unfortunately, sometimes you're next to somebody and face coverings are highly recommended. However, people now have choices, you know, and maybe your colleague doesn't like wearing a face mask and that makes, you know, makes you nervous, don't want to go to work. So definitely the warehouse industry has taken a huge impact. Um, there's jobs, don't get me wrong, but we can find, it's hard to find good qualified people and who are willing to show up in an environment where you're working, I mean, honestly, with somebody that you don't know. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about what are some of the top uh, areas for employment that you're having difficulty finding employees in Monterey County? The top area? Yeah, well, like which jobs do you have that, that are available, but employers are not just finding employees who, who are willing to do those jobs? I mean, overall, it's hard finding good qualified employees overall. Um, I would have to definitely say the warehouse industry. Mm -hmm taking a huge impact. Okay. Um, let me ask a few questions that uh, come up in your presentation. Um, one is you talk about employers being able to have a competitive edge versus others by improving the workplace environment. Can you give some examples from your own experience where you've seen an employer really create a, a great workplace environment that people want to work at? What are some creative things that you've seen out there in the in the marketplace? What have, what have some of them done? Honestly, we currently have a client here of ours and they do an amazing job in making our employees feel valuable. And I mean, it could be the smallest things. It's like every other week they have like a appreciation, right? They have a goal that they have to meet certain weeks and she'll go out and she'll do these little things for them. She'll have a luncheon or she'll let them leave early, 30 minutes early. Um, she tries to be very flexible in people's schedules. Cause as you know, you know, a lot of people are, have children. A lot of people have doctor visits, have things going on in life. It's just part of being a human, right? You got stuff going on. And she always seems to be very flexible, which makes our employees feel valuable. Cause well, Hey, and actually her attendance is great. The employees there, they don't miss work. They're there on time and she really values it. And I, it makes my job easier to even have people staff there and keep our employees there. Because overall, I mean, it's hard. It's hard finding good qualified people who are going to show up to work. I mean, you can't imagine how many different personalities we have dealt with. Right. And a lot of people, oh, well, you know, I like the job. It's, it's, it's something that I like. It's something I'm passionate. Last is three days. Yeah. Right. So we want to keep, we want to engage your employees. You want to keep them. You want to show that they are valued because overall they are a value to your company. Mm -hmm. You want to show them that. Good, good. Thank you for your answer. I will share that one of my uh, perks that I always like to do for my employees is on Friday at the end of the day at 458, I would go out and tell my staff they did a good job and they could leave early that day. Well, normal quitting time is five, five o'clock. So <laughs> I would tell them they could go home two minutes early. Now, that's clearly a joke to entertain myself. But, you know, using a sense of humor, an appropriate sense of humor in the workplace, you know, people appreciate things like that. Yeah, we're all here to work hard, but we also want to have a good time while we're doing it. So, you know, occasionally I have a new employee who's starting on uh, Monday. And so we're going to, I'm going to, go out to lunch to welcome that new employee, everybody okay. to kind of get to, to meet them and, and, and know them in a comfortable way. So um, good. Um, let's see what, let's talk about other changes from the pandemic is working from home. You know, when the pandemic came, many of us who have office jobs had the possibility to work from home and it kind of, I think it kind of changed the, the environment and changed the expectations. Can you talk about what you've seen? Now, obviously a warehouse job and certain jobs you can't, you don't have that option, but a lot of other jobs you do have that option to, to work from home and maybe be as productive or more productive than you were when you were going into the office. Uh, Julia, can you talk about your own experience with that? What have you seen employers do? They had to switch to uh, remote work, but now we're in a time where it doesn't have to be that way. 
How do you see employers responding? Are they still allowing work from home? Are they going to hybrid? What have you seen? So I've seen a bit of hybrid going on currently. We actually are doing that here in the office right now. Um, I think it's worked out perfectly fine because it gives you that that secureness that your employer cares about you and cares about your health, right? Um, it's definitely been a huge change, right? From right when the pandemic hit till we are today. I definitely feel like it's, it was a great way to show us that even where you're, whether you're home, you're in the office, work can still get done, All right? We can still go to work. We still can not be fearful because all right, you go to, you know, the first, when the pandemic hit, we're all fearful going into the office, right. right? We're all scared what's going on, but being able to work from home has definitely changed. And I mean, what better way, right? You're waking up, you be in your pajamas and getting your stuff done. Right, right, can right. Be, be better. But then, it, I mean, the hybrid, I personally really like it. We have it here and we practice this here at the office and I think it's great. Yeah. I feel it gives me that flexibility. Um, currently a mom, so it definitely helps out. So yeah. I think it's a great. Well, you're only aware to p- wear pajamas on the bottom part. Yes. <laughs> I would stand up if you're on a Zoom meeting wearing pajamas. We've all learned that lesson. Um, That's true. So it's interesting for me to see that once employees ha- got adjusted to the idea of I can still get most of my work done uh, in a virtual environment and, you know, it adds certain certain benefits, um, but also certain costs. You know, the parents can be there at home with their children when child care is an ongoing issue because we still don't have enough of that. Um, we also realize many of us how much time we would spend traveling around all the time to get to different meetings and things like that. So now that everybody speaks Zoom, I think that that's helped a lot. And I think where we're going is a place where we're probably a hybrid. Um, I've seen a number of events that nonprofits in particular did during the pandemic where they actually ended up being more profitable uh, with, with a virtual event, if they could still get sponsorships and things, because many of the hard costs they normally have, they don't have with a virtual event. And now I, we're going to a place where people are having in-person events again. And I see some hybridization of that mm-hmm. where, you know, maybe we have an event that would have just been exclusively in person, but now you have the option to do zoom as well. So it's interesting to see how it's, how it's impacted the environment. And from an employer's perspective, again, what are the expectations of the staff? Some, you may be able to expand your employment pool if you allow some level of uh, working remotely, right? Mm -hmm, Correct. Yeah. Uh, So another question uh, from your presentation, you talked about uh, upskilling. So improving the skills of your workforce. Um, Do you have any uh, recommendations from your experience of, either different uh, websites or different tools that people are able to use locally to understand the the level of their workforce and help move them up uh, to the next level? Do you, can you offer any tips on, uh, on upskilling? I would definitely uh, do research, definitely. Um, you wanna motivate your employees. You want to uh, give them trainings, maybe workshops, definitely it's something that I feel like has been a big success with us especially like in our warehouse you know we have a lot of employees that go on general labor move all the way up to become a machine operator and it's all due to you know sessions asking questions doing research ask you know a lot of times what happens is that they come in they'll give us a resume but it's like a rough resume right and Sometimes unexpectedly, somebody has more experience than you actually know. So it's asking right. questions, as you know, be, seeing somebody who is active and, and goes in and, you know, are not scared to, you know, hey, I seen the machine's not working. Hey, I have a quick question. It's somebody who's engaging, right, into their work environment. So definitely, right. I would say training sessions, um, lots of research. Okay, uh, here's the question here, uh, which is, what sources can employ in your presentation you talked about offering competitive pay how can an employer know that what the com- what the competitive pay is for a particular area how are they able what resources might they use to find out how much to pay a, a particular position I, I, you know what we usually do you know we'll go on indeed 
Monster, Craigslist, all these other employers. And at this point, it's very competitive. And mm -hmm. I will tell you that it's extremely competitive and order free. I know sometimes, you know, you can't compete yourself with these huge name companies, right? And it's understandable. But we, being in a competitive pay rate is huge, especially here in the Monterey County. Um, we're, all, we're always encouraging our new clients, um, what, you know, to keep that in mind because it's very important because um, unfortunately we have employees who will and have gone for the competitive rate. From what, you so know. what do you do? Do you just go to Indeed and type in a job I, title in an area and see and see what because a lot of times people don't even offer what the pay range is is there some other type of uh service that that employers are able to use that kind of keeps track of of pay rates outside of just going themselves to indeed and whatnot um at this point i well, that's all we've been using we usually go compare it on our on our track um i know there's metrics that we can go into our system and but this is um, a little bit more further into detail but you can all, it just makes it easier when you can type and see what your competitor, right? What they're hiring for and what they're paying for. So that self makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. And, and maybe another, um, another resource might be uh, many areas, including Monterey County have a human resources association and people are able to talk, you know, among trusted friends, you know, like what the pay rates are for different positions and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I guess also the market would probably tell you if you're paying a certain amount and not getting applicants or you're talking to applicants and, you know, they, they may be a source of information as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Doing, the know. applicants are definitely your best resource. Yeah. Uh, the, the next question, this looks like the, the last question I see here is, um, and this is a little bit different, but what is one of your favorite questions for an employer to ask when they're going through the interview process, trying to ideal, find that ideal hire, what's kind of a question that's a, a little bit maybe out of the ordinary that you like for employers to ask during the interview? I personally, I like when the employers ask, which is very important. For example, how long, so, we're, we're supposed to check references, right? So right. for us, it's very important. What I like when they ask me, hey, Julia, so this employee stating that he's been in so, so, so company for so this amount of time. I like going, I like when they ask me to go above and beyond to verify. It's just mm -hmm. a personal, personal thing that I like. I like them asking me to do that. Because, um, you know, a lot of people will send their resumes and you expect a certain, you know, person to know the position unfortunately not all the time but I like to do that I like to do a little bit of research on the employee itself mm -hmm. and what it, for employers uh I don't know how common it is for employers to do background checks on employees I feel like the more sensitive the position or the bigger the company the more likely they are to do a background check can, can you talk a little bit about background checks and again for smaller employers what are the risks of not doing it? And if they wanted to do that, how do they do it? So it all goes back also on the pay rate, right? If you're going to hire somebody per se at $15 an hour, I definitely do not recommend to do a background check, right? Because you're, you're wasting money on doing a background for, for a position that is minimum wage. I definitely encourage like how you mentioned on the level, right? The level of the position. Um, I would definitely recommend, you know, if you have a high paying rate position, definitely do a background check. It's mm -hmm. very important. So, uh, and how, how would employers go about doing a background check? Do you use a certain, is there a website or so there, local companies that you reach out to? How does that work? So there's many companies that you can go ahead and reach out to. Um, there's, you can even, I know they can reach out to the county and you can have them run to the sheriffs. There's many, many ways that you can go ahead and do that. We personally use the webinar and it's worked out really great for us. Okay, good. Uh, well, as we start to wrap up, are there any other uh, thoughts that you'd like to share? The topic of today was hiring in a pandemic, new strategies to help you find and retain those employees. Uh, any parting words that you'd like to share with us, Julia? I would just to hang in there and remember to um, 
for your employees, make sure to make them feel valuable, compare prices, right. and just, you know, exceed for the best. Yeah, that's good advice because as everybody knows, a successful business is one that has happy customers because happy customers tell other people. And I think it's the same way with the workforce, right? If people, if your employees are happy, they're telling other people, hey, this is a great place to work, you know? Definitely, word does get around, trust me. So Good. definitely, if you keep that in mind, value your customers, I will guarantee you will not have nobody walk out from you. If anything, you will have thousands of applications. Awesome. So I want to thank you on behalf of your company, Spherian Staffing and Recruiting, for joining us today to, to share your insights. Um, the next workshop that we'll be doing in September, uh, scheduled for September 13th, is working from home, rethinking the office structure and the need for space. So kind of related to some of what we've talked about, uh, our series of workshops are are really about how the pandemic is uh, impacting businesses and what we can do to help those businesses survive and thrive. So with that, we'll go ahead and finish our, our workshop for today. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, if you want to find more resources that can help your business here in Monterey County, please go to www.montereycountybusiness.com, which is the pandemic hub that we've created with the Building Business Back program. Again, I'm Paul Farmer with the Monterey County Business Council. Thanks you to Julia Cervantes and thank you to Sverian. Thank you. Uh, Y'all have a good day now. Goodbye.